Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. Do you like my dragon onesie today? It has a hood. <laughs> so you probably remember Rankin and Bass as the company that made all those scary little claymation specials around Christmas time that your family definitely watched every year if you celebrate Christmas. But did you know that they were also the people that made scary little claymation specials at other times of the year, namely Halloween? Oh, if you see this curtain moving, it's not that the place is haunted, it's just that my cat, Monk, is, um, he's found a new favorite spot, and it's, of course, here in my filming room, so what are you gonna do? Cats do what they want. In 1967, they made a Halloween special called Mad Monster Party, or sometimes I guess the name has a question mark at the end, which I don't fully understand, so it's Mad Monster Party. My neighbor tipped me off to this when he suggested that the neighborhood do a socially distanced viewing of the movie on Halloween night, since there's no trick-or-treating this year, there's a plague going on. And oh my god, it's such a bizarre little movie, so of course we have to talk about it today. So our movie starts out with Mr. Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, if you will, <laughs> who in this movie is voiced by the absolutely iconic uh, Boris Karloff. A lifetime of experimentation kept in one small vial. And he has successfully created a vial of something. So somehow he avoids getting electrocuted to discover that he invented... <laughs> explosive liquid? Quoth the raven, nevermore. Poor bird. <laughs> created the means to destroy matter. Yeah, so he's really fancy smancy about it, but more or less he just invented liquid C4, I think. I'm gonna stop talking about things that explode before this video gets flagged by the system and pulled down off the internet. Oh, what a fine party we'll have when they all arrive. So he invites all the other monsters that exist to the castle so that he can be like, hey, I invented this thing. Be proud of me. I absolutely love the credits of this movie because it um, it says starring and then lists off all of the fictional monsters that appear in the movie and then also says Boris Karloff, like it credits Boris Karloff as being one of the monsters. Could you be someone's invention? But then it credits the other actors and, you know, talent and what have you as talent. Tell me please that you made a date with the devil. But they're just like, they're just like, nah, Boris Karloff, he doesn't exist. He's a monster. <laughs> also, they somehow signed the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Can't believe he's appearing in this movie. His manager must have had a fit. So this is Frankenstein's nephew, Felix. Uh, he's a, he's a pharmacist or he works at a drugstore. Felix? Well, take it out of my pay, Mr. Cronkite. I love the voice direction of Felix because it's clearly like a, um, a Jimmy Stewart impersonation. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Cronkite. Yeah, but Felix is really bad at his job. He's kind of bad at everything. Poor Felix. Need I remind you that this is a drug store? There are people waiting at the lunch counter. Oh, I always forget that drug stores used to have, like, lunch counters. Of course, at this point, I've basically forgotten that outside existed and that we ever congregated in groups of people. So he gets an invite from his uncle to go to the Mad Monster Party. Hey, it's the name of the movie. And his boss is so upset at the thought of him taking a day off that uh, his eyebrows spaz out, but then he eventually says yes, so it's all good. If you leave, who'll make the coffee? Well, apparently not him, even if he stays, because he's not doing his job anyway. You might as well just let him go, you know? You think Felix will get there May the 13th? I sure hope so, or this is gonna be a short movie, I guess. So now we start meeting the monsters individually. First off, of course, is Frankenstein, the, the doctor's creation, and Bride of Frankenstein. They have kind of a weird marriage because uh, Bride of Frankenstein kind of goes from yelling at Frankenstein to singing about how great he is in like two seconds. That you'd play a different game cause you're different. <laughs> Yeah, it's such an odd little movie, but the voice acting and the overall talent is really, really good. They have like an iconic group of people doing voices in this movie. Like Bride of Frankenstein is voiced by Phyllis Diller. That's hilarious. You're different. 
the songs do get pretty repetitive by like the third or fourth chorus and I'm pretty sure they reuse some of the animation, but you know, we're just gonna look past that. Bigger fish to fry. This is Francesca, she's the doctor's assistant. He basically tells his assistant, hey, I'm wanna I, I want to retire, that's a sentence. I want to retire and I'm gonna leave everything in charge of my nephew who has no idea what's happening here. He's never even been to this island. I love him to pieces. Well, that wasn't very nice. So a bunch of the monsters are boarding a ship to get to the island. Um, they're really freaking out the crew of this ship as like the hunchback carries a mummy onto the cargo deck. Dracula's broke, so he's just like dips out as a bat and they get really freaked out. And by the time Felix shows up, they just let him onto the boat for free because they're just like, we don't need any more of this nonsense. Just, just get on the boat. <laughs> oh no, don't leave Mr. Werewolf behind. Oh, good for him, he made it on. And Felix stays in the dark for a pretty long time uh, partially due to the fact that he's blind as a bat without his glasses, which I can relate. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, but I lost my glasses and can't see a thing. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> the Invisible Man is just such a person in this iteration, right? <laughs> so while the mummy is scaring this poor crew member, Felix is talking to Jekyll and Hyde, Jekyll slash Hyde on the, on the deck. Oh, I have a little elixir that keeps me feeling in wonderful metal. <laughs> oh yeah, looks like it's doing wonders for your health. And Jekyll is not very good at keeping his hide secret in this version. Like, like, didn't he try to keep that whole thing on the, on the down low in like every other version of Jekyll and Hyde? This one he just like, pulls out his hide potion and just like starts throwing back in front of random people. Are you sure you're not seasick? Lucky for him, Felix is a little slow on the uptake, so he still isn't catching on. So the ship starts getting close to the island and all the monsters just kind of yeet their way onto dry land. So meanwhile, Dr. Frankenstein is lecturing his staff about, you know, the upcoming weekend. I'm gonna take this hood down. It's, it's getting in my peripheral vision. And his one like helper butler person yet, she makes me uncomfortable because he's super creepy with Francesca. Oh, Francesca. Take your hands away from me. <laughs> yeah, you tell him, Francesca. I hear her voice, so soft, so sweet, when I'm awake or when I sleep. Mm -mm. Don't like this. Don't like the lack of boundaries here. Do you really think that it would dare to come here uninvited? Oh yeah, and they keep referring to the monster It, who like even the other monsters think is a terrible person. Uh, we don't see It till the end. And um, I knew that it obviously wasn't going to be It the Clown because he very much didn't exist in 1967. But that's all I pictured the entire time that they said It. So throwing that out there. Oh my dear, you look just, uh, just ghastly. What a diss to something that you built yourself. So one by one, all the monsters start showing up. And of course, Francesca, you know you have always been my type. Oh, negative, isn't it? Why is he also creepy with Francesca? Poor Francesca, what is this bullshit she has to put up with? The hunchback of Notre Dame ain't a boxer. Afraid it'll ruin his looks, huh? You don't have to be so mean about it. I love your eyes. I love your chin. I love the shape they put you in. Nope. 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 This is harassment. This is just straight into the territory of harassment. Also, I was just sitting here thinking as I was editing, you know, obviously this character is an impression of Peter Lorre, who like everybody did impersonations of, and they kind of memed him a lot back in the day. He was just one of those actors and like, poor Peter Lorre. <laughs> I don't know much about him as a person. All I know is that everybody would mimic him all the time. And like, especially with this character being super creepy, like, poor Peter Lorre. But anyway, he goes to check on dinner. I make it with a poison ivy, a tortoise stools, and a poison of berries. <laughs> Yum. A pinch of this, <laughs> a pinch of that. Ouch. The hell was that? He just pinches ass? Does no one know what consent is in this movie? Jesus Christ. There is something missing. What? Something missing? I bust the author. Yeah, so the chef doesn't really take criticism well, so 
Yetch kind of has to skedaddle out of there pretty quickly. So at dinner, Dr. Frankenstein tells everybody that he made this thing, it's really destructive, and he's retiring. And obviously everybody thinks that they're gonna be the successor. I am his logical successor. To be fair, they're probably all more qualified than Felix. Who could be closer to Dr. Frankenstein than me and Fang? Why he created us, Francesca. So this is the second reference in the movie to the fact that Francesca was built by the doctor. And it's weird because it's like they try to keep it as like a secret so it's a twist at the end, but like it's so obvious. So it just is them talking about it, but then not bringing it up in a way that like actually explains much about anything. So it's just, it's strange the way that they execute that. Now we get the scene where this band of skeletons performs this like British invasion style song. <laughs> I don't know why they made it sound like Daffy Duck was the elusive fifth member of the band, but anyway. So Francesca pulls Dracula aside, he's creepy some more. Now that we are alone, what will it be? A quick nip on the ear, a playful bite on the neck. Count, I'm afraid you've been drinking. And she's just like, stop being creepy, I have a plan to share with you. If you will uh, get rid of this would-be successor, I will be given the doctor's secrets. And I shall share them with you. Then I shall get rid of you and have all the secrets to myself. I love how he just says that right in front of her. She's like three inches away from his face. How did she not hear him? Yes, yeah, so they have another dance number. It's always awkward because the claymation figures don't really move exactly right for that kind of thing, but you know. <laughs> I love how the tap dancing sounds don't even kind of match up with his feet. God bless. Now tell me, who is this successor? I'm surprised you didn't ask before the dance number. I would have wanted to know who the successor was before I sang about it. What kind of a monster is he? A ghoul? A, a demon? A spook? Or a, a... A human. They're the worst kind. Oof. I should be offended, but I think he's right. But then Frankenstein... Uh, Frankenstein's monster. I know it gets kind of confusing and um, Bride of Frankenstein, they overhear everything and um, kind of turn the tables on Dracula and Francesca. And then Francesca and Bride of Frankenstein tear each other's dresses off and fight. Couldn't tell you why. Then there's this huge bar fight style fight between everybody else. Bunch, anyone? Ah, I see what you did there, movie. So later in the night, everybody's sleeping it off. I'll fix that. I mean, you could just move. <laughs> uh, that works too, I guess. But Felix finally shows up the next morning. It took him an awful long time to row himself out there. Let me help you ground the boat. Please, Uncle. Let me do it myself. He's trying his best. Let's see, Yetch is still stalking Francesca. And then Francesca and Dracula further flesh out their plan to kill Felix now that he's here. And I don't think we'll have too much trouble eliminating him as the doctor's successor. I don't know what's weirder, the fact that he's brushing his hair with a toothbrush or the fact that he bothers to look in the mirror when he knows damn well he doesn't have a reflection. Uh, but when they try to kill Felix in the forest, he has such dumb luck that they keep missing. There you are. Felix is just over here like an accidental John Wick. Watch that. Cheese! Oh, but with mayo. I don't like mayo. Oh, but watch this. Cheese without mayo. Oh, but it's on wheat toast. Oh my god, if he pulls out one more sandwich, I hope Dracula just kills him anyway. But alas, he does not. So next, Dr. Frankenstein takes Felix into his lab and tries to tell him that he wants him to take over for him. And even though Felix should not be surprised by this information about monsters, he really is. I am the head of the worldwide organization of monsters. Mm -hmm. Monsters? Bless Felix, he just, he just doesn't get it. I'm turning over to you my secrets and discoveries, the entire business. We're just not gonna talk about how Dr. Frankenstein just has a jar of human flesh to feed to his plants. But consider this. <laughs> 
I swear to God, I just got this out of my head. I went to bed, like, humming this to myself. You gotta stay one step ahead. Stay one step ahead. Tune in to what's happening now. It just, it, once it's in your head, it will be there for the rest of the day. I'm sorry in advance. Tune in to what's happening, boy, and stay one step ahead. It's such a cheery, upbeat song to basically say, Hey, you wanna be the master of death and destruction? So Felix tells his uncle that he needs some time to think it over. Is there any place on the island where I can fish? Is there anywhere to fish? You're on an island, my guy. If you're not around, the monster will get them, and we'll make much better partners for Dracula. So they all try to corner Francesca. She escapes. She sends a very foreboding message off. I think it's to it, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I can talk him out of retiring. Oh my god, Felix has, like, the dumbest dumb luck I've ever seen. <laughs> Bless his heart. So they corner Francesca again. She tries to get the jump on them, but she's also really indecisive, so it doesn't work out too well for her. Can I see a torch for a vampire and a wolf's bane for a monster? A wolf's bane for a werewolf and a torch for a vampire. And then she jumps out the window and escapes a second time. So Felix saves her life before the, the crocodiles in the lagoon eat her. And then this happens? I hate to do this. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, Felix. Oh, you're not mad? Oh, Felix. Okay. That's, uh, not judging, not shaming anybody. Maybe this isn't the healthiest relationship. Francesca, does your head feel lighter than air? Yes. Then you must have allergies too. <laughs> God damn it. There never was a love like mine for you. Never was a love like mine. Yeah, and this just seems like a one-sided thing. Like, this doesn't seem healthy. But anyway, now Francesca is an evil because she has a boyfriend now. So she's like, hey, we gotta get out of here. Get off this island. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dracula is holding a meeting to make sure that everybody's on board with killing Felix. I cannot allow us to do this to Baron von Frankenstein. What about Francesca? He could have given heart to you. Well, I mean, you can't own a person. That's... that's not cool. That's not okay. He kept her for himself. Himself, yetch! Women are individuals, sir. She should have been yours. You deserved her, yetch! I don't like where this conversation is going. Let's stop for a minute. I have to catch my breath. Well, of, of course you can't walk anymore. You're in, like, six-inch heels, girl. Ah! Felix! Help me! Maybe it likes pills! I do enjoy how the music doesn't intensify with the moment in the movie. <laughs> we better start moving again. Yeah, forget making room for Jesus. They need to make room for Dracula because he's about to come and kill them. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not leaving you. I'll carry you out of the jungle. Mm. Say, you're heavier than I thought. Such a romantic he is. Attack! Kill! Maim! Decapitate! Jesus, calm down, my guy. Yeah, so basically all the monsters gang up on Felix, but he pulls out a little vial that conveniently looks exactly like the uh, matter-destroying formula that the doctor created. I'm pretty sure he just brought it from the drugstore. I don't think it's actually anything deadly. You didn't realize that rapier keen, silken smooth Felix Flanken could be so rough and tough and hard and strong. Ah, oh, dude, what are you talking about? You're super hardcore. You're like heavy metal. Nothing's more badass than your sandwich indecisions. Uh, but then also it shows up and it apparently is King Kong, so. I wonder why they didn't just call him King Kong. <laughs> so King Kong goes to the castle, finds a picture of Francesca, and he's also kind of stalkery with her? What the hell? <laughs> oh, and then he destroys the castle. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Meanwhile, Yetch is getting even creepier. It straight up just feels like I need a content warning on this bit. Now at long last, you are mine, Francesca. At long last, I am going to kiss you. Oh, God. 
It was a different time when they made this movie, wasn't it? He just gets yeeted out of there, though. But then it, King Kong, he takes her captive, so really an emotional roller coaster for her. <laughs> and then Dr. Frankenstein's just like, hey, go get to the boat. I'll take care of this now. You're going to do something? <laughs> You're crying? That's not enough. I mean, she has a point, but I would also be crying, I think. If I ever get out of this mess alive, I'll never hack and chop in a jungle again. Because you know all the different times in life you have to do that, right, Felix? So now Dr. Frankenstein and a bunch of his henchmen ride their old-ass airplanes into battle, and it's just a full-fledged recreation of the iconic King Kong scene. He puts Francesca down. Not 100% sure why, but I'm, I'm glad for her. And then she and Felix get away on the boat. Well, just Felix is on the boat. Where's Francesca? Quick, Felix. Start the engine. Oh, there she is. And if you're thinking, hey, what about all the other characters? <laughs> Yeah, they just all die. Dr. Frankenstein's like, you know what? Screw all of this. And then he just blows them all up, including himself. Oh my God, how dark is that? Well, I know it's wrong, but I have this tremendous urge to sing all Lang Syne. Yeah, that is, that is wrong, <laughs> Felix. You've just seen your only living relative meet a brutal demise. But he tells, what is her name? I just forgot her name. Francesca. She, he tells Francesca that he wants to marry her. And she's like, oh, well, I can't do that. I can never marry you. What? <laughs> yeah, so this is what I mean about how it was clearly meant to be a twist, but it wasn't because they, they didn't hint at her being a robot. They just were like, hey, she's a robot. Twice, at least. I'm not a human being like you are. I was created by Frankenstein. Well, Francesca, ah! You! Well, Francesca, none of us are perfect. Are perfect. Are perfect. Are perfect. Are perfect. Are perfect. Okay, <laughs> that's the end. Felix is also a robot? <laughs> and presumably they will go to live a long, happy robot life together. Good for them. <laughs> this movie definitely has a cult following, though. I have never even heard about it before, like, I don't know three weeks ago when my neighbor brought it up. And I've been trying to track it down ever since because I knew I wanted to cover it on the channel. So now I have, and now I'm very tired. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Is it something you watch every year? Does claymation terrify you like it terrifies me? I mean, I hate claymation so much that I once wrote it into a short film. It's easy for you to say life is all gumdrops and Christmas specials over there for you guys. First of all, those claymation Christmas specials terrify us. We started that to ruin your Christmas specials. It just gives me so much anxiety, but that could just be me. So, you know, what do I know? But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, anything and everything you do to support this channel it means the world to me. Love you guys so much. You make my whole day. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye.